What's up everybody, welcome to today's video. So this is actually a old upload that I'm gonna re-upload. I had to cut some bits out because I might've got copyrighted strike on that video. So anyway, this is how to count. This is how to improve your counting and how to be a referee like I was. So yeah, it's an old video. My hair is different, so don't hate me for that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to the channel. So this video, we're gonna be doing something a bit different to what we normally do. And I'm gonna be going over how to be a good darts referee or how to be a good darts marker the guy with the pen i want to show you i'm going to tell you how how i done it i want to go through some experiences that i've had doing it um as many of you know probably if you watch my channel already i worked for the pc for about six years doing this sort of stuff on the pro tour so i kind of know what i'm talking about hope you enjoy the video let's get straight into it so Number one, we're going to talk about maths. So what you want to do is practice. The only thing I can tell you is to practice. But there's a few things that I used to do when it, when it comes to the math side of things that, that really like helps me out a little bit. So first thing is just to practice and just get good at get good at the darts maths. So what I mean by darts maths is you're never going to have to do more than times a number from 1 to 20 by 3. And you're never going to have to take away a number bigger than 180 from a bigger from a number bigger than 500, 501. So darts maths is not difficult, in my opinion. I'm good at it, so I guess it's probably a bit easier for me. But darts maths really isn't a hard thing in general. I mean, there's no point learning how to do division and stuff because you're never going to use it in darts maths. So learn your darts maths. Next thing is to learn combination shots. So get them memorized in your head. So there's things like when players will go 20, 19, treble 18. I'm not, going, I'm not there going 20, 39, and then 54 is... I just know it's 93. It's 93 because it's in my head. It's in my, it's in my memory. It's stuck in here, and I know that, that that is that. And it's the same with pretty much every single, every single combination. Unless they miss what they're going for, I know what they're going to hit. I know what it is. I don't have to actually use any maths to work it out because I just know it. Next is anticipate what they're going to throw. So once they get a little bit a little bit lower down into the leg, that down to like the 300 odd mark, you can sort of predict where they're going to go. So they might not be going for a treble 20 anymore. They might be switching to the 19s or 18s, depending on what on what they are. So learning this is, is quite important. Um, it, when I first started marking in the PDC, it caught me out a little bit. Uh, I have players, I remember one time I had, I, had, I think it was Kim Hybrex was on... 309 and in my head in my darts head i'm thinking right single 19 probably and then two treble 20s leaves, leaves 170 but what he did was he went treble 19 and then i'm starting to think okay then he hits another treble 19 and my head's just gone so i'm like oh, okay well he'll probably hit another treble 19 or a 20 that'd be a 133 or 134 and he didn't he went for a bullseye and he hit 25 so as a uh, inexperienced professional marker that completely threw me I had no idea what he was on I had no idea what he had left but that's just one thing that I had to learn was shots like that um, are gonna they're gonna crop up in in top level darts because it's it's routes that players go and stuff like that so that was actually 139 scored and uh, left 170 so they went that way for a reason and you can just learn them you can learn all those different combinations and stuff Countdown in your head, when they get towards a finish, if you start counting down in your head dart by dart, so let's say they're on 201, and they go treble 20, in my head I'm going, right, 60, 141 left. Uh, and then they go single 20, I'm like, okay, 80, 121 left. If you can do that towards the end of the leg, then when you get the the time when the player will turn to you and say, what does that leave, you can, you can answer it really, really quickly. One thing I like to do as well is I like to double check my scores. Um, so I'll write my score up, and then I'll put my hands down and I will double check my score in the time it takes the next person to throw his first dart. So it doesn't take a lot of maths to work out what the first dart is. So you can always look back when the second dart hits and you can work it out a lot easier. So I will, I'll put my hands down and then I'll just glance at the score I've just written and just double check that it's actually correct. And then I'll go back to marking the next, next three darts and so on. Next section is the scoreboard. So whatever it is that you're scoring on, whether it's a chalkboard or a whiteboard or using an iPad or an electric scoreboard, make sure that it's decent. Make sure that it actually works and uh, it's, of, it's of good use. If you're using a chalkboard, make sure you've got a decent amount of chalk and a good rubber and sort of spray as well. Um, I prefer, when it comes to chalk, I prefer spraying the chalk with water instead of just rubbing it off because it smears and it's difficult to see sometimes. If you're using a whiteboard, then make sure that the eraser is working fine, it's not leaving smudges, and make sure that the pen is decent. It's a good pen. Nothing worse than running out of ink with a pen. There was one time when I was working the PDC that 
we just had this pen drought and I don't know how it happened or what happened but we had a day where all the pens died on a Saturday so on a Sunday I was I had like seven different pens in my pockets and we were having to go through and I was getting through like one pen a leg and it was a nightmare it was horrible because you're trying your best to do a good job of the scoring and your equipment's letting you down it's not even like your head's letting you down you're not even making mistakes it's just your equipment so that was that was horrible that was horrible doing that um and yes yeah, so just make sure that your equipment's good if you're using an iPad or, or an electric scorer make sure that you're not in a position where you can kick the off button or something so things like that Another thing is make sure that your handwriting, if you're on a chalkboard or a whiteboard, make sure that your handwriting is of a decent size. So the way that you can decide how big to do your handwriting is to take however big your scoreboard is. If you've got a massive scoreboard, you can you can write bigger numbers. If you've got a little scoreboard, you have to write smaller numbers. And then if you know the players you're marking for, or even after like six or nine darts, you'll be able to gauge how good of a player they are and how many darts is probably going to take them to uh to finish a leg so you can have a sort of idea on how big your letters have to be to fit that many that many darts in so if we have a look on the screen now um uh this is a game that i marked so this is justin pipe versus michael van Gerwen. and i leave you can't see the bottom of the scoreboard here but i leave probably enough space to fit 24 darts in and that's a professional level so if you're marking at a lower level, you're going to want to leave a little bit more space. Maybe like allow for 30 to 40 darts and then then you should be fine for the most part. But let's go through some of the things that are apparent on this scoreboard. So at the top, JP, Justin Pipe, MV, MVG, Michael Van Gerwen. So first things first, whoever's, whoever's name gets pulled out of the... Um, it's pulled out of the draw first always goes on the left every single time so justin was the top seed in this tournament so he was on the left michael van Gogh was lower than him so he's on the right but yeah so then that determines who goes for the ball first so the left hand side player always goes for the ball first so justin went for the ball and uh michael van Gogh won the ball and i can tell that because this star up here shows that uh this person won the bullseye so let's work our way down. The score, the running score line. Do numbers. Write numbers for the running score line. If they're 2 1 up, write 2 and write a 1. If they're 5 4 up, write a 5 and write a 4. Don't, like, tally it. I hate seeing that because it's difficult to tell what the score is sometimes. And if you get confused and you get muddled up and you don't really know what the score is because your, one of your tallies has, like, overlapped with another, it can just be a nightmare. Write numbers. So much easier. This little line here, this is to indicate who start it is. So if it's Justin's start, there'll be no line here. Uh, and Justin's start will be up at the top. But because it was Michael Van Gogh's start, and Justin's on the left, then I draw a line here to indicate that uh, there's there's no score here. So not like there's no score, but th there's, no, there's a gap here. So as you can see, three darts, three darts, six darts, six darts. They're all in line with each other. So that line, basically, if it's there, it means that it's Michael's start. If it's not there, it means it's Justin's start. It just, make, it just makes it easier for you to keep your scoreboard uh, neat. Uh, also, another, another thing. You see I, see I write the, the number 100. The amount of times I see people do a tick or do a cross, it's just ugly. Like, as far as professional standards go, you actually have to write the numbers. You can't do a tick or you can't do a cross. So you have to write the numbers. So that, so I got used to doing it, and that's just a thing that I have to do. So write the numbers. Don't do ticks. Don't do crosses for tons. Don't do M's for maximums for 180s. I hate that as well. That just looks horrible. And don't circle numbers as well. If you're marking for your buddy and he scored a three, then by all means circle it. But if you're mar if you're marking for like a professional player and they score a shit score, don't circle it. It's not funny. They're not going to find it funny. Okay, next thing. This this uh this diagonal line. So this diagonal line, the purpose of this is to indicate what the person has left. So you do a diagonal line when the person leaves a finish. So as you can see here, he left 138. I've drawn a diagonal line through the through the score of the last score and the remaining score of the of the time before. So the whole idea of this is that a player won't get muddled up between which one of his is which which finish he's got to go for sometimes you will see players try and finish the score that they've just hit not very often but it does happen and then going along that as well one of the reasons why that happens is because 
players tend or markers sometimes will mark backwards or in my in my opinion mark backwards um if you're from yorkshire it is marking the correct way but by a professional standard and this is something that we have to do uh the first column is the score hit the second column is the score remaining the third column is the score hit and the fourth column is the score remaining sometimes you'll see uh, score remaining remaining score uh, if it's up north I know Yorkshire do it I don't know I think it's a northern thing it's not a southern thing it's not something I've ever done but there was a time in the PDC where a lot of people were doing that and we had to all come together and say look we all need to mark the exact same way um, that's gonna be the new way of doing it so you'll never see someone marking a PDC event going score remaining remaining score it'll always be score remaining score remaining Okay, next thing is stand in a position where both players can see the score at like the majority of the time. So sometimes if when I used to play, it used to really annoy me if I had to stand on the hockey and then like tilt my head around because the chalk is in the way of my side of the score and I don't know what I'm on. So as you can see on the screen here by this absolutely lovely person here, whoever this chalker is, they've got fantastic form, okay? So they're standing right out of the way um, you can see the whole scoreboard, both sides of the scoreboard as well, because sometimes you might want to see what your opponent's on. So both players need to see both sides of the scoreboards at all times. Um, and yeah, so make sure that they can see absolutely fine. If for whatever reason you, your, your view is obstructed, let's say that I could not see the top dart here from my, from my angle, um, then wait. Wait until the third dart is thrown. And then you can step into the board and you can have a look at what they've scored after their last dart, but before they retrieve the darts. So be prepared to like step forward, have a look at what's going on before, they, before the player gets to the board. And the last thing, this might sound random, but this is something that is fairly important actually. Uh, and that is hold all of your equipment. If you've got a pen and a rubber or... Uh, a, a cloth and a piece of chalk as you can see my pen is like ready to go here I'm ready to write down the scores um, have your pen in your writing hand ready to go have your rubber or your cloth or whatever it is that you're using in your other hand ready to wipe and uh, yeah it will save you picking stuff up and dropping stuff and causing delays and drops and stuff so you want to do that it makes it so much easier as well okay another important thing to do is make sure that you're familiar with the rules so there will be different rules for the pdc there'll be different rules for the bdo for the most part the rules are generally the same there aren't i don't really know off the top of my head if there are any rules that differ from one organization to the other but darts rules are darts rules make sure you know the rules when you're marking a game because there might be times where scenarios happen and you don't know what the actual what the rules are on it and you might get caught out and then you're gonna be in a bit of trouble so some basic rules are a player can ask you what he has left at any point and you can you can answer him if you answer wrong then that's difficult if you answer wrong and uh the opponent picks up on it the other player picks up on it then they could call you out for it after the three darts are thrown and then it's just a big mess so try and be correct if you give them the answer of what's what's uh, what's remaining uh, players cannot ask you how to finish a leg. So if they if they want 91 left and and they say how do I get 91 out? By by the rules you're not supposed to answer that. But if someone's asking you how to finish, then they probably have never played darts before and you're probably fine just to tell them the answer. It's not something that's going to happen very often. Mistakes. Mistakes happen. I've made a couple of mistakes in my time. Mistakes do happen. So if you write up a mistake uh, let's say you take off an extra 10. That's normally what what happens in a mistake is you take off an extra 10 or you or you don't take off enough uh, by 10 normally. Um, then the way, the only thing, as far as the rules go, um, let's say I made a mistake here and then three darts later they throw three, three more darts and I write down their next score. That mistake is now gone. You can't fix that mistake now. That's As far as the rules go, you can't fix that mistake. If... They pick up on the mistake a few darts later and they both agree that it's okay to change it, then change it. Just change it. It's easy. Um, but if they don't agree, then the then the, the mistake should should stay. So 
yeah, if you make a mistake and three more darts happen before the mistake's corrected, then that mistake's going to be there for the whole time. Uh, if you're unsure if the uh, if you're unsure that the point is touching the board, um, so another rule is the point must be touching the board for the dart to count. Uh, and there's going to be scenarios where maybe the dart's landing, uh, laying on top of other darts, and the point is like just barely touching. If it's touching, then um, then it, it counts. It, it counts in whatever segment that it's touching. But also, that is up to you. That's your responsibility to find out if it's touching or not. So you've got to analyse the situation, have a look at whether it's touching, whether you think it's touching, and then make a decision yourself um, and stick by it. You're the one in charge. So what you say goes, really. So stick by whatever it is that you, that you decide. A place where the rules don't necessarily count as much or aren't necessarily held up to as much is if you're marking for a, a very low league game of darts or a very low quality game of darts if you're marking in the local pub for two players who aren't great then don't do the pdc bdo rules on them don't tell them this that and the other just let them play darts be a bit more lenient on the rules when it comes to that sort of thing as well you can be hard on the players when it comes to a good standard and the last thing i want to go over is darts etiquette so this is basically the unwritten rule of darts this is things that you will have to, you will have to do just for the sake of doing it essentially uh, the first thing is do not move don't move never move while they're throwing never move if you don't have to move that is the most annoying thing is trying to play darts and you've got you've got the fidgeter marker he won't stop moving and if you mark for a high sound of darts you will get called out on it all the time and you will be made to look like a fool so do not move while they're playing. Do not move while they're when they're about to throw. Just move when you need to write the scores down or you need to check what they've scored. And make sure you check what they've scored in between throws, not like if they've thrown a dart and you don't know where it is, you just give it a quick one of them when they're about to throw the second dart. Don't do that. If you make any mistakes and you pick up on the mistakes pretty quickly, often when I make a mistake, I'll pick up on it before the next person's even thrown one dart. I already know in my head that I've made a mistake. So... Uh, I'll pick up on it and I will not correct the mistake until there's two scenarios. One is the player, one is the opponent will pick up on the mistake and tell you and which case that's horrible time because then then it looks like you didn't you didn't know the mistake had happened but you do. Uh, and then and the other time is wait for that opponent to throw his three darts, then correct the mistake, then write down their score. That's the easy way of doing it. The best way of doing it and it's the the way that's going to cause the less hassle <clears throat> again another thing is don't move i said it once already uh this one is more in in reasoning if uh if someone's hesitating or if someone's unsure of where the darts are um don't move don't turn around and tell them what they've scored unless they ask you what they've scored or what's left um just assume that they know what they're doing and don't move only move when they ask you to move or they ask you for information or they ask you for this that or the other the best way of doing it is the easiest way of doing it and if they don't know what they've scored they will ask you and uh it makes it easy be courteous to your players so you are the boss you are in charge but give them some slack if you feel that slack's needed so one instance where i've had i've done this before um it happens quite a lot dart players often go to the toilet during legs which is a bit annoying the rules state that if someone's let's say let's say uh, Bill Taylor's playing Van Gogh, right? And um, and Bill Taylor throws three darts, and then Van Gogh decides he needs to use the toilet. So Van Gogh walks off, he goes to the toilet. As per the rules, the next three darts thrown should be the next player. But Bill Taylor stood there for two or three minutes while Van Gogh goes for a wee, does his business, um, and his, his arms getting cold. His arms are getting cold. So I've had it before where... Um, I've had players just stand there and they're like waiting for the other person to come back and you know let them throw a few darts let them don't don't say that they can't throw darts just be a bit lenient with it I also, I also had another time where uh, it was Dean Winstanley versus Simon Whitlock and Dean threw a dart in the board and it looked like it bounced out and I didn't really think anything of it I assumed it was a bounce out turned out, he'd point, turned out that he'd, his point had snapped in the board so Dean's now without a dart his points in the board. On another note, when as far as rules go, I did say if the point touches the board, it counts. But the point has to be in the dart. 
So the darts rules are that um, a dart is between 10 and 50 grams. Uh, it has a shaft on it and it has a flight on it. So the point itself is not between 10 or 50 grams and it does not have a flight and it does not have a shaft. So the, if, if, if the point's on the, in the dartboard on its own, it, it doesn't count. But anyway, getting sidetracked here. Um, Dino had to go and get his dart case and replace all of his bits and pieces and it took him probably like 10 minutes to, to sort out his point issue. Uh, I don't think he had a spare set of darts on him. I think he had to go and find a spare set of darts. <coughs> so I just let Simon throw his darts while Dino was waiting and then when Dino come back I said look do you want six darts and then we'll continue the leg and he said yeah so starting with Dean, Dean threw three darts then Simon then Dean then Simon and then we start the leg. So that's the best that's kind of like be, le be lenient be nice to your players and uh, yeah. Try not to engage in conversation during legs. For some strange reason, dart players love to have a chat with the marker during the leg. I don't know why. And it's kind of, it's, it's annoying really. It's really irritating as a referee to try and referee the game at a professional standard while so-and-so so -and -so is, is joking about with you during the match. So annoying, but just try and brush it off as best you can. If you're there chatting to, to a dart player during the match, then the opponent straight away is going to think that you two are already mates before the game. Then you'll get then you'll get accused of cheating or something, and uh, it's not worth it. Don't engage in conversation with the players during the match unless you have to. Uh, shake both players' hands when the game's finished. So when the game's finished, make sure that you shake both players' hands. Um, sometimes your players will not want to shake your hand. Happens happens fairly often, not too often, but sometimes. Someone gets beat and they want to go and sulk instead of shaking hands, so let them go. Don't worry about it. Don't lose sleep over it. And the last thing is just remember that you are in charge. You are in control of, you are in control of this darts match. What you say goes. If they've got a problem with it, they can go and find another official and and uh, let them know. But the fact is, you're the you're the only official um, referee watching the game you're you're the only person there there are other officials at pdc events but for the most part they're not watching your events your your matches so you're in you're in, you're in control what you say goes and if they don't like it then it's not a lot they can do really is there but that was a long video um hope you enjoyed it hope it was interesting and uh, that's basically how to be a professional mar marker or referee not too difficult if you know your maths anyone can do it Thanks for watching the video guys and I'll see you later.